for joining us uh, this morning, this afternoon. Um, obviously, uh, we all had a chance, I hope, to review the Supreme Court's ruling. Uh, a number of months ago, I was elected mayor of the city and county of San Francisco, the 42nd mayor, and I took an oath of office, pretty simple oath of office, same oath that elected officials take across this country, and that was to bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the state of California and the Constitution of the United States. I felt that what we did as it relates to providing people the dignity, the opportunity, the right to be afforded equal protection of the law uh, would be consistent with the law and the constitutional protections therein when we began the process of disseminating same-sex marriage certificates in San Francisco. I was elected, in essence, uh, not to advance discrimination, but I was elected to end it. San Francisco is a proud city. We do not tolerate discrimination. San Francisco is a remarkable city because you have people from all over the world living together and advancing together across every conceivable difference. This is what it's all about. We're focused on the things that bring us together. And one of the things that I'm so proud of about San Francisco is that people of this city supported the decision we made, supported the actions we took, supported our advancements in humanity, our advancements in human dignity, by recognizing that it is fundamentally wrong in this country, fundamentally wrong in this city, to deny people equal protection under the law. It is wrong to deny tens of millions of Americans the same rights and privileges that people like myself and our city attorney are afforded just through happenstance because we married someone of a different gender. We decided to challenge the law. We decided, more importantly, to put a human face on discrimination. We decided to give people a narrative, a story. We decided to put human faces like Phyllis and Dell. We decided to give people an example like theirs, a relationship of five decades, 51 years of love and commitment and compassion to one another. And we told the people in this city and we made a, a statement across this country and for that matter around the world that this is what it's about. It's not about discrimination in the aspect and the as, uh, in, in the abstract, it's about these people and their lives and the fact that we're denying these people and their relationship, the same rights, legal and otherwise, and the same social status that millions, hundreds of millions of Americans have frankly taken for granted. That's why we did what we did. And I'm proud of what we did. And I stand by what we've done. And I'm proud that 4,037 couples from 46 states, eight different countries, came to San Francisco to live their life out loud, to say, once and for all, we matter, our relationships matter, our family matters, and society needs to wake up and say enough's enough. Discrimination separate does not mean equal. Discrimination exists in this country and exists against gays and lesbians and bisexuals, and it is wrong, and they took a stand, and I'm proud of those 40,000 couples. I am proud of the people that had the courage to make their way to San Francisco, those San Franciscans, that had the courage to stand up on principle and say, I do. And there is nothing any judge, lawyer, politician will ever do to take away the moment those couples shared together. There is nothing any court decision or politician will ever do to take that moment away. I am proud of those 4,000 couples, and my heart is heavy because today, based upon the Supreme Court's determination decisions, their relationships as it relates to their status as a married couple have been invalidated. I respectfully disagree with the Supreme Court's decision, but I respect the court and will respect the order. I have and I will respect the order of the California Supreme Court, but now we move forward to the next level to the next step, and that's the core question at hand, the question that is being advanced through incredible organizations like ACLU, uh, NCLR, Lambda Legal, and of course our own city attorney, and that is the constitutionality, equal protection under the law, whether we have the right in this country to deny people their constitutionally protected rights. There's a reason we feel confident, but I hardly feel overconfident. And that is because of what's happened not only in Massachusetts, but Vermont, Hawaii, Alaska, 
what happened in this country in June of last year on Lawrence versus Texas and the anti-sodomy decision, and the fact that Supreme Courts across this country have had to grapple with this question. And in many cases, in all of those cases referenced, they've recognized the sanctity, rather the significance of the Constitution in relationship to individuals' rights, freedoms, and their privileges, and their equal protection, and that status that's afforded them under the Constitution. There's a reason the President of the United States wanted to write discrimination into the Constitution. There's a reason I'm proud to have taken the oath of office to the Constitution, because there's something right about the Constitution in this country. And that's the question we now are going to advance, but very differently than we would have otherwise. Now we have these 4,000 couples to tell their story. We have their immediate family, their extended family, their godparents, their sons, their daughters, their cousins, their aunts, their uncles. We have these credible people now that can share their story across this country and around the world. So I'm not in any way discouraged. I'm frankly more resolved. I'm not in any way threatened by those that feel that decades will go by and will never convince the majority of Americans it's the right thing to do. No, I think we will. I know we will. It's a question of time. Do you know in this country in 1958, polling suggested that 96% of white America opposed interracial marriages? In 1958, how can that be? This is the same struggle. It's just a different era, but we're wiser, we're smarter, and we've learned the lessons from the past. We will prevail. It's simply a matter of time. And so, again, I say, I respect the Supreme Court's decision. I respectfully disagree with it. But we will abide by its order and its directives immediately, as we have and as is appropriate, we will. I'm proud of those couples, and I'm sorry that this decision was rendered. I'm hardly surprised by it because I'm not naive. And we never expected that this struggle would end with a Supreme Court decision today. We knew that it would begin with renewed vigor and energy as we advance the most fundamental question, the question that will be difficult for any Supreme Court to grapple with and has been difficult for every Supreme Court to grapple with, and that's the constitutionality of this law. I do believe what we've done is right because the Constitution affords us that right. I want to thank everybody on the legal team for their outstanding work, Dennis Herrera's outstanding leadership, Dennis's team that did a remarkable job, all the pro bono work that was done on behalf of San Francisco, on behalf of the core principles of the city, the principles, I would argue, that were laid by the founding fathers of this country were advanced through the arguments that were made uh, by uh, the team that you see to my left and the right. And I'm proud to uh, ask that our uh, city attorney uh, say a few words I honor his good work, and I look forward to working closely with him as we advance this year the constitutional question and ultimately have it adjudicated uh, by the California Supreme Court. Dennis? First, just to echo the mayor's uh, sentiments, we're disappointed with uh, the court's ruling today, mainly because we look at the 4,000 couples that are at the vanguard of a civil rights struggle, and we sympathize with the disappointment that they feel today. But my message to them and to the mayor is thank you. Thank you for your courage and leadership. The fact of the matter is that a struggle for civil rights and equality is never an easy thing. Sometimes it takes time. And I'm proud that our office had the opportunity to defend the mayor's actions and the actions of other city officials. But for us, it doesn't stop there. The fact of the matter is we're just as committed to ensuring equality and civil rights for all Californians and all people in this country, just as much as the mayor is. And this is only the beginning of our struggle. And we're proud that working with Lambda, ACLU, NCLR, that this is just the beginning. The mayoral power issue has been decided. What remains is really the heart of the issue, the broad constitutional question with respect to same-sex marriage here in the state of California. And we look forward to advancing that case. We'll be uh, initiating our briefs starting in September. And we're fully confident when you, when you look at the trend in the law and the good work that has been done by everybody and that will continue to be done by everybody, that we will be victorious. And the fact of the matter is, every temporary setback has a future. And I think at the end of the day, 
the leadership of Mayor Newsom, and of the 4,000 couples who are at the vanguard of this struggle, they will be vindicated. When we are victorious when it comes to fighting for the civil rights of all people. And we look forward to that battle, and we, we look forward to working with our partners in that struggle. Thanks very much. And there are two people here, uh, Supervisor Amiano and Supervisor Dufty, who have been extraordinary uh, leaders in the gay and lesbian uh, community. Uh, and I'm proud that they join us today. And I'd ask that Supervisor Amiano and Dufty, if you'd like to say a few words. Thank you. I want to thank the uh, mayor for uh, his eloquent uh, words. I was hoping for a change of venue. I was hoping Judge Judy might get this case and we would get real justice, however. <laughs> uh, and I don't want to minimize the real pain and grief that people are fe uh, feeling. Uh, there was a few people in my office crying this morning, and I, and I get it. It's a hard one, but it's a temporary one because we cannot minimize the joy that was felt in this building for weeks, we cannot minimize the depth of the commitment of the people who were married. We cannot minimize the magnanimous gesture of our mayor pushing the envelope and striking a national court. My nephew, Joey from Florida, called me this morning. He said, come to Florida, I'll find you a guy and give you a honeymoon. <laughs> this is progress. So I, I look forward to doubling our efforts. You know, the constitutionality was not ruled on, which I think is a, a good window. Uh, Assemblyman Leno has a terrific bill uh, in Sacramento. We got to make sure that we turn out uh, in force for that and also for the November election. Uh, and in the meantime, Supervisor Dufty and I uh, are authoring a piece of legislation that will accord all the married couples uh, uh, domestic partnership rights uh, as of the day that they were married. It's the least that we can do to reassure people uh, that we are down, but certainly we're not out. Well, we've been out, and that's the issue. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, as a San Franciscan who's gay, I've never been more proud of my city and our elected family who are working together. Uh, I simply want to say that I know our mayor has said this many times, and I will say it today. The best is yet to come. We will prevail. This is unstoppable. Thank you. Imagine some of you may have some questions. <laughs> the Attorney General uh, Bill Lockyer this morning said that uh, you went around about this the wrong way. You should have started with the courts. Yeah. Well, I respectfully disagree. I wanted to put a human face on discrimination. What we did, I think, was appropriate. What we did is set a tone and tenor, not only in this city and the state, but across this country. Uh, what we've done, I think, ultimately will be vindicated uh, by subsequent actions and subsequent events as we advance uh, the core provisions, the basic principles uh, that are afforded each and every American under the Constitution, and we make sure that the full promise of the Constitution is afforded every American. I suggested that your actions have actually galvanized um, those who oppose gay marriage and that there will be actions in other states um, to take steps to prevent what's happening here. Can you comment? Yeah, on that's that? exactly what happened in 1948 when the California Supreme Court galvanized people that were opposed to interracial marriages. And unfortunately, it took two decades for this country to recognize that the absurdity of that, you know, until 1967 in Loving versus Virginia. And again, overwhelming majority of Americans in 1967, the year of my birth, were opposed to interracial marriages. But we look back with absolute, I mean, with bewilderment that that could have been the case in this country. As we'll look back at bewilderment that we're having this argument and debate, and there's so much interest in this room, uh, here today. Uh, this issue had been brought to the forefront in June of 2003 with the Lawrence versus Texas decision. It was brought to the forefront in November of 2003 with the Massachusetts decision. It was brought further in the public's mind when the President of the United States decided to use the Constitution to advance his political career by writing discrimination or supporting the writing discrimination into the Constitution on January 20th when it was clear to everybody in that State of the Union address that he wanted to get elected and he would do it on the backs of people that were not being treated fairly and equally under the Constitution. Uh, hardly were the actions here in San Francisco uh, the real reasons uh, that so many Americans have uh, been drawn into one camp or another. That train had left the station. Now, they were particularly harsh to you in saying you were wholesale defiance of the law and that you have to immediately take corrective action. I didn't find the words harsh at all. I mean that, uh, and I mean that sincerely. That yeah, maybe I, <laughs> I've been in politics too long. I, this was easy. Looking back um, on the whole thing now, is there anything you think you could have done it differently to get a different no. outcome? No. I'm proud we're here. I'm proud of the steps we've taken. 
I'm proud of these 4,000 couples that go around day in and day out and talk about their relationships, talks about their experience and their marriage uh, and their families. I'm proud that this country is coming to grips with the realities and the inevitability of the reality that we have no right to deny people to loving adults the ability to live their life out loud like my wife and I have been afforded. No, I'm very proud of it. Every single person that came to San Francisco, uh, trust me when I say this. People that have been denied equal protection of the law understand in ways I could never imagine the bigotry and the denial of their rights. And when they came to San Francisco, these couples knew exactly what they were doing, each and every one of them. Uh, I don't need to necessarily equate any apologies. My only apology is we didn't succeed today, but my expectation is we're going to succeed tomorrow, next year, or the year after that. In light of today's decision, how do you respond to leaders within your own party and even within the gay community that you probably should have moved forward with this case, that you didn't have a chance to, to win this case, and that in the end you were hurt? Well, we'll determine whether or not that's the case, won't we? Uh, this is just the beginning of a long process. I feel what we've done are, is right, and I feel good people in this city and good people across this country, millions of Americans, think what we've done is right. Uh, I'm not going to play politics with this. Uh, only person playing politics with this is the President of the United States. Shame on him. What he's doing is wrong. And he was absolutely rebuffed, wasn't he? Rebuffed when he couldn't even get 50 percent of the Senate. It was an embarrassment to the President. I'm not going to play politics with this. There are core principles here at work, and I believe in those principles, and it's never the right time, is it? Never the right time. But I think what we did was right and appropriate, and history will judge that. Mayor, what's the potential financial impact of having a refund marriage license recently? We are insignificant. Uh, the reality is of the $4.98 billion budget, uh, that the revenue that was generated because of these uh, these licenses was nominal at best, insignificant at the end of the day, uh, and we will appropriately begin the process of refunding for those that choose to have the money refunded. And I think the court uh, was wise to not mandate a refund, but suggest that we have an obligation, or rather mandate that we have an obligation only if requested to refund. I'd like to see some of those refunds go into legal defense fund go in a separate fund so we can advance the constitutional question. I think that may be the appropriate thing, and I think you'll be surprised by how many people will take us up on that. Mayor, uh, let's have hypothesize a moment that you win the constitutional case. The opponents say they will then go through the ballot <coughs> to get a constitutional amendment on the state constitution banning and Right. Charge. How confident are you that the state is political uh, situation is such that you could beat that back? All right. You know, hey. You, you said fail today, you fail tomorrow, you learn something, you move on, you fight. I'm not going to just roll over, give up, say, oh, that's it, we lost. Look at the polls, 70% of people in, you know, Missouri can't stand, you know, the idea of two loving people coming together and living their lives to affirm a relationship, an institution called marriage. Why give up? I mean, you wouldn't have the Voting Rights Act, you wouldn't have the Civil Rights Act, you wouldn't have women voting in this country, people just gave up because they're worried about some reaction in some period of time. No, we're going to fight until the end on this. And it will be in my lifetime. I'm confident it's going to be in my lifetime. And if it's not, it'll be in the next generation's lifetime. These principles are significant. These principles are critical in advancing this country and the core values in this country. I love this country. And I don't think you need to divide a country in order to move it forward. I think it's time in this country we start talking about bringing people together what we're doing out here and what we did in San Francisco is bring people together. And that's a wonderful thing. No regrets. As, as one of those 4,000 couples who actually six months ago to almost the minute was taking the vows, um, I just feel obligated to say to you, thank you, because you did put a human face on it. But more importantly, you gave us a taste of true equality. And without you doing that, there would be no understanding of what true equality is and equality and justice demand what you did, and we are appreciative. Thank I appreciate you. it. That's very kind. Thank you. Uh, Dennis, is there any town at all who feels this year, or this, this is basically yeah. This is it, Barbara, uh, with respect to the mayoral power issue. And uh, as we've said, we determined we're going to file our own independent lawsuit against the state of California. Briefing starts on that in uh, two weeks. I think September 8th we have a case management conference. So we'll be moving forward on the constitutional question in the Superior Court and moving forward during the fall. How long do you think it will take for 
for the actual constitutional question to be ruled upon in the lower court, and then I'm assuming that that then goes to the Supreme Court. Yeah, we're hopeful. Uh, we're going to be filing our briefs in two weeks. There'll be uh, reply, opposition briefs that are due, and then a case management conference will be held to sort of set up replies. I'm hopeful that we'll get uh, uh, a decision out of the Superior Court in the winter months. Would you uh, then move push to go directly to the state Supreme Court from, from the Superior Court, or would you take it through the appeals process? Would, would, you, would you want to hopscotch to the next Right time? now, we're just focused on going through the Superior Court, and we'll make our decision based on what happens in the Superior Court. What can you tell us about your courtroom opponents as individuals and groups? Yeah. Hey, <laughs> I, I'm not in the business of commenting on personalities of courtroom opponents. We're making our case. We're focused on the core constitutional question of same-sex marriage, and that's what we're focused on. I'm not going to get into a, an issue of uh, dealing with personalities or the like. Any consequences for the mayor for overstepping his authority? I'm sorry? Any consequences for the mayor for overstepping his authority based on the ruling? The fact of the matter is the mayor, if you look at the legal authority uh, that we cited, the mayor had a perfectly defensible position based on over 100 years of California authority, 12 cases of Supreme Court vintage, which justified what he did. And I think if you go and look at Justice Werdiger's dissent today, she talks in great detail about her belief that the majority goes much further beyond where they needed to go in talking about a local executive's ability to deal with constitutional issues. So there's not, there's not going to be any consequences. Dennis, could you just comment on this process of giving that or nullifying the licenses and giving back to do you feel that the city is obligated to send the money back to ask for the licenses back, even if people wanted to donate it to a defense fund or, or whatever? How do you interpret what this ruling said as I, far as the city's obligation? If you go and, and look at it, there were a number of different uh, areas, and they, they said that they wanted us to take all steps to notify the individuals, and we'll do that. But uh, I think that... Uh, if you go and look, it talks about that we can refund that money on request. And, uh, of course, all appropriate uh, requests will be dealt with. If, if, if they make a request, we'll be refunding the money. What sort of advice do you have for anyone who might have used a marriage license in a legal way to obtain some sort of benefit they might not have had? Otherwise? My client is the city and county of San Francisco. I don't give... But I don't give personal advice to individual people. Who have them right now? What do you tell them? Just as we've told them, if you look at the disclaimer that exists on the licenses, we advise them to seek personal counsel of attorneys to examine their own personal situation, and that would be my recommendation to them. I don't. I don't. Does the ruling today help or hurt your constitution? The court was very clear. All the justices that opined were clear in saying that were very clear in saying that they offered no opinion with respect to the constitutional question. And they were very clear and circumspect in dealing with the issues that were before the court, the mayor's power and the validity of the marriages. And they made no commentary with respect to the constitutional question, which is in exact keeping with the order they issued taking this matter up in the first place. They exhibited their clear preference that this matter be litigated through the trial court and work its way up in the appropriate fashion. As far as I'm concerned, it, 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 it gives me no feeling one way or the other. We're going to focus on our constitutional issues, which we have uh, tremendous confidence in, and we're very much looking forward. And I would just say that, you know, our opponents uh, tried to distract and detract from the legitimacy of the constitutional inquiry by focusing on Mayor Newsom and what he did. The fact of the matter is, is that now we're going to get to the heart of the issue. And ultimately, I have every confidence that Mayor Newsom's courage and the courage of those 4,000 couples will be, will be vindicated in the end. I haven't had a chance to, to speak with them. Um, what an extraordinary life they have. Uh, had and what extraordinary courage they've demonstrated throughout their relationship of five decades. Uh, what an incredible, uh, incredible relationship. And I think, based on some comments I read that they made today, uh, that uh, they put it in perspective. You know, they're they're getting up there in age, uh, and they never thought this would happen in their lifetime. 
and it was so wonderful to see them, that first marriage downstairs, to see their relationship finally validated. Uh, now, of course, there's been a setback. Uh, and my hope and expectation uh, is that they will, again, uh, live to the, see the day when, once again, uh, we can conduct uh, a ceremony that will be uh, uh, supported by the Supreme Court of the State of California. And I expect that day will occur in their lifetime. There were a number of places within the ruling that the judges said, if we let one mayor decide for himself that a law is not constitutional and change public policy, yeah. we're going to have confusion and chaos throughout all 58 counties of the state. Yeah, but the reality is you judgment. didn't, did you? You'd have 58 counties, 400 municipalities, and there wasn't one action taken. Yeah. You know, I mean, let's just deal with the reality. We can hypothecate day in, day out. I mean, people are hypothecating, you know, after women got a chance to vote, oh my gosh, what's next? I mean, the absurdity of some of these hypothecated examples, you know, trees marrying apples and things. I mean, I've heard all of it. It's, it's unbelievable. And it's demeaning uh, to the realities of a unique relationship between two people that love each other. Uh, the fact is, the whole process works, isn't it? Work wonderfully well. You know, the, the system was set up for this. We took the order from the court. We stopped, went through a process, oral arguments were made. They rendered a decision today, and we're going to abide by the decision. No irreparable harm was done. Sky did not fall in. The world didn't come to an end. The institution of marriage did not end because of these actions. There were no riots. The system is set up for exactly the kind of action that we took here in San Francisco. The system works. Thank you very much. Thank you all.